If you've gone to the trouble of taking off the prop shaft on your SL, perhaps because you want to change one of the differential seals or the gearbox seal, um, one of the things you're gonna wanna check is the universal joint. Now, this universal joint, unfortunately, is knackered. It shouldn't be notchy. It's notchy there and it's notchy there. It should be completely smooth and you shouldn't be able to feel any notching as it goes to the central points. So that universal joint is knackered and you're gonna have a decision um, because Mercedes don't make this part anymore. You can either try and get a second hand one, which is probably gonna be in the same kind of position, same kind of shape as this one, or you're gonna to have to get it refurbished or rebuilt. Now, um, the SL part shop to rebuild these universal joints for a princely sum of 370 pounds plus VAT. Um, here in Bristol, we've got a company called HJ Chard Engineering that can um, not rebuild them exactly like this because you need special presses to get these back in. What they do is they modify them using circlips, the kind of circlips that you can get them out, oil them and grease them in future. So we're gonna get a quote to see how much that is. Um, but when you get the prop shaft rebuilt or sent off, it's gonna have to be balanced. And in order for that to happen, um, almost certainly of these flexible discs here have never been changed, you'll find that when you take them off, first of all, that they rock hard. They don't have really have much flexibility left. And secondly, if you look closely, you'll see that there's cracks in them. So it's just a matter of time before that fails and leaves you stranded somewhere. So while this is out, you might as well change the various parts. Now, these flexible discs, actually, they look like they're attached to their sort of as part of the whole pop shaft, but they're not. If you tap that with a hammer, that will actually come off. And it's just held on by these raised things here. So the first point to mention is that the flexible discs on the later SLs from about 1982 were the same on the front and the back. They looked exactly the same. And these flexible discs, um, you can get the cheapest place that I found to get them, or get decent ones, was Mr. Auto on eBay. And I'll give you the part number for that is here. 126 Okay, there you go. That's a new one. It comes with the bolts as well. Um, on the earlier SLs, the rear and the front discs were actually different. Um, as you see, this looks different. And it actually has a different part number as well. Which is that part number there. If you do get your prop shaft off, just have a look at the discs. If they're both the same, obviously if they look both the same, order them both the same. If they obviously look different, like these do, then you've got the part numbers there to order the two different ones. Okay, so that's the um, flexible discs at the end. That's the price of the um, two flexible discs. If they're both the same, you'll pay 37 pounds each. Um, and if they're different front and back, you'll pay 37 for the back one, 45 pounds for the front one. That's for Mr. Auto on eBay. That's the first thing. The next thing you're gonna have to replace, almost certainly, are these centering um, bushes here. Um, and Mercedes don't do them anymore. So the cheapest place I found them is at the SL shop, that SL shop. That's basically these fittings here. And there's one in each end, one in that end, and one in that end there. It's important that you replace them because they're plastic bushings and the good chances they'll be cracked or knackered. Um, the part numbers and prices of those parts are just here, including delivery, £31.40 for those two parts. Okay, and that there you've got good eyesight is the part number 115410032. You need two of those from the SL part shop. Um, the actual centre bearing, this thing here, I got mine from Mercedes. Um, you could probably save yourself a bit of money if you get it elsewhere. The part number for that, 008 981 4325. 
That's this thing here, £16.83 plus the VAT. They, it's something they do actually keep on the shelf in Mercedes in Bristol. And um, one of the reasons for getting it there. And then last but not least is the bearing housing, which on your car will almost, almost, almost be knackered. Cheapest place I found for that, a decent Fabi Bolstein one was Ace Parts. Um, that's the part number there for them, 05263. You can see the price there, including the VAT, £16.69. Okay, in fact, I say last but not least, there's one thing, another thing that will certainly be missing from your car. That is the little flexible rubber dust shield. Um, I got that from series, it's not expensive, £3.52. Part number for that. MA202411497. That will almost certainly be missing from your car. So there we have it. That's the actual um, picture from Mercedes for this um, prop shaft. It's picture number 15. And these are the various part numbers. If you need to order them, you can from Mercedes. You can refer um, you can refer Mercedes to this. So we've got the bearing. We've got that flexible um, rubber dust cover there. We've got the bearing housing here, these flexible joints at the end, um, and the rest of the bits are still on the car. So all we need to do now is get this universal joint sorted if we can, and if we can't, we've got a choice of whether or not to put it on as is, bearing in mind this car's done about a quarter of a million miles. It's lasted a pretty good time or whether to go to the cost of sending it to the SL shop or possibly that engineering company there. Just arrived in the post today from the SL shop is a part that we've been waiting for for the last couple of weeks and I'm intrigued to know whether it's the right part. When we were taking off the axle shaft, so the prop shaft for um, the 1976 SL, the donuts, which are basically the fittings that attach the prop shaft to the gearbox, etc., were bent slightly and the splines were worn out. And um, so, this hopefully is a new fitting that's going to be exactly the same as the other one. We hope. What are the chances of this actually being correct? There's the Mercedes part number. Let's open it up and have a look. Look at that. That does actually look like the right part. So let's take that down to the garage and see if that's the same as the other one. Both these bits not only look the same, but this does fit on the gearbox shaft perfectly. And if you look closely, and how will you pick this up with a camera, but the splines are much, much thicker and different. This is the one that came off the car. And these splines, these are the splines inside here, are worn, completely worn out. And that was the reason why on this car, this was so loose. It was basically loose on the gearbox shaft because the splines were worn. This is actually quite loose. So, um, this bit fits perfectly on the car and will hopefully stop that play. Okay, the cost of that flange, including VAT and delivery, £117.65. Obviously, if you know what you need to order from the SL shop before you start the job, you can save on some of these postage costs. Okay, so we're just gonna, first thing we're gonna do is put this on the gearbox shaft. That should just slip down there perfectly. And there is no play in that at all, which is perfect. The next thing we're going to do is put on the um, the castellated nut, but these castellated nuts here should actually have a seal ring on them, which this didn't have um, when we took it off, But so we're going to actually put a seal ring on it, and that is going to slightly um, change the number of turns that we need to put this back on, but this was so loose when we took it off in the first place, I'm sure it wasn't torqued up. So we're just going to clean this off a little bit and put the seal going on and tighten this up. That's the first job.
We're just going to use some WD-40 degreaser, put it on a little toothbrush here and just get rid of all of this old oil from that fitting. This fitting here and it looks to be some kind of brass alloy fitting. And actually, um, I can see what somebody has done in the past is they've taken a chisel or something like that to this and try to bash that off without the correct tool. As I've mentioned um, in a previous video, the correct tool to get that off is a castellated socket, which you can get from laser tools, and that just fits exactly over that. And like that. Now, if you haven't got one of those and you're not going to get one and you're going to end up bashing this off with a chisel, um, when you go along to Mercedes to replace that nut, it will look like this. And what you should do is also have a seal ring as well. Now, interestingly enough, this is the gearbox, um, the nut that holds on the gearbox flange, and it's different to the one that holds on the um, rear pinion. They are different thicknesses, oops, they're different thicknesses and they're different shapes and sizes. Okay, well the first problem we've run into is the seal ring does not fit over that thread unfortunately, so we're going to have to put on this um, nut as it came off and that was without a seal ring. Okay, with the car in neutral, this thing is just going to spin freely, so we're just going to put one of the old bolts in here um, so that we can turn this and tighten it up without this thing spinning. Well, I can't see any torque settings for this nut. And I'm just going to tighten it up to about 55 Newton meter, okay, that's all nice and tight. And then playing that turns freely, so we're going to go on to the um, rear diff. We've got exactly the same problem here on the back as we had on the front, namely that the seal rings they've sent us don't actually fit over the threads here. So we're going to have to put the um, nut on without a seal ring to change this seal which was leaking. We've cleaned up all the leaking oil, so if it still leaks we'll be able to see. Um, this is the seal that came out. There's not too much wrong with it. Often you, when you take a seal out you can see it's completely disintegrated. Um, what I can say is that when we took the nut off it is extremely loose. Um, the only thing I can see that's slightly wrong with this seal is that some of the rubber here has worn off. Anyway, we've got a new one of these seals. In theory, you shouldn't need to use any kind of jointing compound. The Haynes manual does say use a jointing compound, and I'm going to put a very fine bead of jointing compound just round where it's metal to metal. And what we're going to use, important to use a non-setting jointing compound, and we're going to use this stuff here called Universal Blue Non-Setting Gasket Jointing Compound. And the reason is because um, that might have been leaking maybe because this surface is not perfectly um, flat or smooth inside there. So we're just going to put a tiny dab of that onto the new seal. This off. And depending on how thick a bead will depend how far down you cut. We're just going to top, cut the very top section off because we just want a very thin bead. Very thin bead of jointing compound round here. Just going to twizzle that round, keeping even pressure on the squeeze. I don't really ever use jointing compound as far as I'm aware when it's rubber to metal but this here is metal to metal. We're just going to put a thin bead all the way around without getting it all over our hands, preferably. Just rub the inside of the surface where the seal's going to go, just a little bit of uh, gearbox rear diff oil just to help that seal slide in. Very light um, bead of oil around the edge, the rubber edge of that seal and also inside just to help it slip in a bit easier. Okay, make sure the seal is sitting flush all the way around that you can't get your nail underneath it, especially at the top here where it's 
difficult to actually tap it in. So that should be sitting flush and you may see the tiny little bead of um, blue jointing compound just squeezing out, which is absolutely fine. Um, to make life slightly easier, I disconnected the handbrake uh, spring just from here, these two holes here and here, just so I could tap that in a bit easier. Use the old seal over the edge and tap it in that way. We've just used a rubber mallet, this one here. It's not ideal because it's slightly too big, but it worked absolutely fine. Um, now we just need to put in the flange and then put the nut over that. Grease inside the splines. We're actually going to use a little bit of um, gearbox oil and then we're going to put a little bit of grease just here to where it touches the seal. Okay, we've got the flange on. Just need to put the castellated nut on and count how many turns it takes to put that on. Basically, as you tighten that nut, you're going to be pulling a gear forward against the bearings. And if you over tighten it, there's going to be too much pressure on the bearing and it's going to wear out. If you under tighten it, there's going to be too much movement in here and you'll probably wear something else out. But if you are uncertain of the correct torque setting or the, where that should be, you haven't counted the turns. Um, the advice that I've been given is it's better to have this slightly too loose rather than too tight. Um, I mean, ideally you want it exact, but slightly looser than, than too tight. And you can, if need be, put a dab of blue thread locker on there if you were at all wide that that's going to come undone. Okay, we've got the pinion flange on and the cap nut on. So a tiny bit of sideways movement as you'd expect, a little bit distance between the gears. Um, but that's on nice and tight. There are quite a few costs associated with refurbing your drive or your drive shaft, prop shaft if you need to. When you uh, take your prop shaft off, the problem with this one was it's ever so slightly bent. These little pieces here have to be dead, dead flat um, in order for there to be no vibration. So that one was refurbished. And the one on the other side, this one here was a new piece. Um, which we had to buy and they do come there are different types here depending on the engine code etc so if you do have to buy one of those and we got this one from the sl shop um just make sure that you give them the engine code as well as the registration of the car because there are two different sizes um of this particular part here now i cheated slightly because i took this along to hc chard we are a prop shaft engineering company to fix the universal joint and they took the old ones out and put the new ones in. They also put the new centre bearing in for me as well. So they took the old bearing off, pressed the new bearing on and put this on as well and charged me £35 for, for that and for putting these two things in. Now I did ask them to refurbish, well that's heavy, I did ask them to refurbish the universal joint as well because mine is a little bit notchy and really that's a sign that it's knackered and what they mentioned to me is that my end spiders here these little end bits here which are actually attached to the prop shaft were slightly bent on both sides and that they would have to either straighten them or get a new set made up and attached to there, which is what I've opted to do now. We're in lockdown at the moment and the companies that do this are all furloughed. So what I've decided to do is put this back on the car for the time being and take them the whole car when they're open for business proper to get them to replace these parts here and also to um, put a new universal joint in. And that, work alone is going to cost about 690 pounds just to refurbish that universal joint and get two new ones of these made up and attached so just bear, bear in mind when you buy an old sl you're never ever going to be able to check this without getting the car up on a ramp and actually taking this piece off but this particular car has done about a quarter of a million miles um, so it's not surprising that these parts are worn out but this is kind of a hidden cost that you may face um, 
when you buy one of these cars. So if you have to refurbish the prop shaft and renew all of these pieces here, etc., which you're going to need to do, you're not going to get that much change from a thousand pounds. So our next job, we've marked it with Tipex exactly where it goes and on here exactly where that lines up. Um, our next job is just to put that back together, tighten this up and thread it back onto the car, put all the bolts back in, tighten them all down to the proper torque spec, and that will be job done. So manual, the torque specs for the drive shaft, the companion plates, attaching nuts, so these things here are either 45 newton meters or 65 newton meters, depending whether the bolt is 12 or 10 millimeters thick. Well, we've measured these bolts and they are 10 mil thick, so therefore the torque spec on these nuts is going to be 45 newton meters. If you are going to do this job, I suggest you get yourself a torque wrench or a torque adapter set. From uh, This one came from Amazon and I'll put the price up for you. So this will basically fit any um, sockets that you've got, either half inch like this or quarter inch or even smaller. Um, relatively simple to use, obviously it comes with the instructions, but it is important when you're dealing with drive shafts etc to make sure you torque nuts up to the proper spec. When this came off the car, the bolts were on this side and the nuts on that side. When it came back from the prop shaft people, they had it the other way around. I don't suppose it makes much difference, but I'm going to put it back on the car the way it came off, which will allow me to get our torque wrench on that side there. The full spec, I'm just going to tighten each bolt up to get rid of any of these gaps. So they're pretty tight, but not at full spec. So rather than just going straight in and tightening one bolt up at full spec, which could pull us out of alignment, we're just going to go around. So you can basically hear or see when this is reaching full torque by either the beeps or oops. it's time to put this back together now. Um, now we've marked exactly where these things lined up and also how far in it went and before you put this back together you need to put on the rubber dust cap um, that way with the small side towards the bearing and the large side towards the nut what you're supposed to do is put this together and not tighten it up just tighten it finger tight and then you're supposed to drop the car to the ground rock the suspension around move the car back and forwards and when everything's settled down, you tighten that up to a spec of 30 to 40 Newton meters. But we're not going to do any of that. We're going to actually put it back the way it came off and tighten it up as best we can, but not too tight because it wasn't super tight when we took it off. The mention is put a little bit of grease on these splines before you put the thing back together. It's on, it's a bit tight, so put a little bit of uh, rubber, a little bit of grease on the inside of the rubber to help it. It's just a matter of sliding these two things together and lining them up tightened up to about as tight as it was and um, if you don't have the correct tools to do this you can use an adjustable wrench there and an adjustable wrench here okay, i'm going to leave it there because putting that back in is just the reverse of taking it off um when you do put it in pack the ends here with grease help you get that on and also preserve the life of the rubber and the plastic there remember to put it on the right way round, the thick end goes towards the um, pinion and the thin end towards the gearbox. And that just about is job done. These bolts here are going to be torqued to 45 newton meters as well. Um, you're going to have to clamp the donut on the um, pinion side with something to stop the wheels moving when you torque those bolts up. You'll be able to figure that out, I'm sure.